All right, what is up? My name is John Hanoski, and I'm going to be doing a show here. It's called King of the Jungle, down in my gym, which I uh, gave a pretty badass name to, the Lion's Den. Um, that name was kind of inspired by uh, my dad, and when I was younger, uh, we used to watch the uh, original uh, UFC, the um, like back in the 90s when Ken Shamrock and uh, Hoist Gracie were the, the names to be. And uh, Ken Shamrock, I believe his gym was called the Lion's Den. And uh, <clears throat> my dad was a fan of, of Ken. He's like the style. He was built nice, you know, and just a tough, tough dude. So uh, as a youth, I always heard the name, you know, the Lion's Den. And we're going to go down and we're going to train at the Lion's Den gym, which was actually a gym that my dad had made um, in our basement uh, in the house I grew up with, uh, in the house that I grew up as a kid. So um, every time we go train, it was, uh, you know, we're going to Lion's Den. We're going to go downstairs. We're going to get it. And that name kind of holds um, some weight. So when you go down there, uh, you got to give your all. There's, there's no bullshit. There's no messing around. So that's, that's the same, um, same mentality, same mindset that I have in my gym. And anybody that comes down and trains with me, um, you know, I explain to them before it even starts, uh, you know, leave your excuses at the door. Um, my gym, it, there's no excuses. We, we get down here, we get it. And, uh, it's a no bullshit, no, no screwing around. Um, we're down here to, to, you know, make, uh, make champions and make myself a champion. So to do that, um, you must do what the champions do. And that is no screwing around. So, um, don't mind the, uh, little black guy, little cut here, the little issue at work. So, um, anyway, um, talk about myself a little bit. I am 30 years old. I um, have a full-time job as a automotive technician at Superior Toyota, which is a um, Toyota dealership in my town. Uh, I've always been a fan of Toyota, so it's kind of like a dream job that came true. And, um, you know, that's, that's, that's the main, my main goal, um, is to make sure that I, you know, I'm the best automotive technician that I can be, uh, so I can provide for myself and, and whatnot. Anyway, um, a little bit of history about myself. I grew up, uh, in Erie. Um, my dad involved me in, uh, motocross. He involved me in boxing as a youth and, um, youth wrestling. So I am uh, no stranger to hand-to-hand -to -hand combat. And uh, I started wrestling when I was six years old and boxing roughly around the same age. Um, so I've been, you know, in and out of boxing gyms for, for all of my youth up until now. Um, <clears throat> my family uh, is actually the largest boxing family in history. And that's the Bizarro family. I have, um, I believe, three world champs. Uh, one is my grandfather, John, the late John Bizarro. Um, give you a little picture over here. I got him hanging in my gym. Right there, that's the late John Bizarro back. Oh, man. It looks like it was 1965 that was drawn. And then um, his brother... Recent, uh, shortly won a world title after John did, and that's his brother Lou Bizarro right there. You can see that he fought Roberto Duran for the title right here in Erie, and uh, won 14 rounds with the um, hands of stone. Actually dropped him in the seventh with a nice right hand, uh, but just didn't have enough for him. Uh, Roberto Duran was was the man back in the day, and uh, I believe Lou's son John Boy was also a W WBC world champ. I have to get back to you on that. But um, he fought 
uh, Roger Mayweather, which I believe is Floyd's uncle. So I have a lot of history in boxing in my family. Um, I turned pro boxing in 2015. It was just kind of like on a whim. Um, it was kind of like a, I took a break during the arm wrestling. I, I just needed some time off to kind of regroup and, you know, see if that's really what I wanted to do. I knew I had some talent uh, with my hands still, and I kind of had some unfinished business with myself. Um, and at the time, cage fighting wasn't, uh, wasn't up and running in my town. I was involved in the first cage fights in Erie, Pennsylvania. Back in uh, 2009, I had um, a fight at the uh, Avalon, which is a big boxing hotel down here. My second fight was also at the Avalon, and then my third cage fight was uh, at Rainbow Gardens, which is associated with um, Waldemir, which is like a, um, a uh, water park and amusement park around here. Um, pretty cool place for, for younger kids. And uh, so anyway... After my third fight, I had um, <clears throat> contentions for a title, and I was training for the title. And uh, during that training, I was riding my motorcycle and just was in an accident with a motor vehicle, with a, a car, and uh, broke my femur, broke my back, broke my right elbow. Um, so that kind of ended my MMA career for a little while. So what I did. To kind of keep my mind uh, in competition mode, I hooked up with Bart Wood uh, with Team Relentless and uh, just started arm wrestling on the weekends. I would go on Sunday practices and it was funny because I was riding my bike over that I wrecked. I, I fixed it in the midst, midst of um, you know me being rehabbing my broken bones and whatnot. Anyway, it was funny because I would ride my motorcycle over there and uh in a in a hip brace so they were you know they were all giggling and shit it was you know obviously it was humorous because i'd hop off the fucking bike and i'd be you know gimping over there like put my arm on the table you know and just just to have some fun some camaraderie and uh you know i kept uh, my morale up i was able to meet some good guys and you know hang out and whatnot um so uh yeah and then my focus was still on the mma and about a year later, when I was rehabbed up, ready to go, uh, I was signed to that title fight. And long story short, the promoter, um, he, he didn't uh, do the venue right, do, I don't know, some money issue or whatnot. But anyway, uh, so that fight fell through. And I said to hell with MMA in my town. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get back to the arm wrestling and, you know, see where it goes. No, I was a low-level amateur. I wasn't good in arm wrestling, um, which is funny because my dad, he was a world champion arm wrestler in 1991 uh, in Netanya, Israel. And uh, let's see if I can get a picture over here for you guys. Where the fuck did I put him at? Okay, I uh, found him here. So... Find a, so I can find a good sit-down picture of uh, my dad here. Here is, it's going to be hard to see, but uh, raising his arm is the returning world champion from Italy, Riccardo Nicolini. And... That is them right there. It's sit downs. 1991. This picture was taken in Netanya, Israel. Pretty wild to think about it. Uh, but uh, yeah, so growing up, I was horrible at arm wrestling. Terrible. Beaten by girls. It was, it was disgraceful. You know, I hated arm wrestling. Um, so I more or less just did it because uh, I wanted to be around some of the people that my dad was friends with. Um, little history again about myself 2008 my dad had passed away from a motorcycle accident suddenly so um you know ever since that day my life has changed but we'll get into that shit on another episode uh but yeah so um 
after after I got back into arm wrestling, the um, Game of Arms show on AMC came out, and we caught wind of it. Um, they were originally filming Dawn Underwood down in Las Vegas, I believe, and uh, my heavyweight from my team, Dave Chafee, went down there to the same tournament and beat Dawn Underwood decisively. And the producers of the show were like, who the fuck is this guy? And what is Erie, Pennsylvania? So uh, they did their research and um, they decided to investigate a little more. And with that investigation, they seen that Erie um, has some badass arm wrestlers. And we've always had badass arm wrestlers since shit the 70s, back when Dan Carr who I'll uh, touch base with on um, and explain a little bit of his history uh, for starting pretty much arm wrestling in Erie. And then my dad, uh, you know, taking the reins and, and really putting Erie on the map. Uh, so, yeah, that's just a little history lesson there. And um, after the Game of Arms show, which I didn't really have much success on because, as I said, I was a low-level amateur and... Uh, you know, got my ass beat, but there you can see my dad right there. That dude was 46 years old with fucking 20-inch arms. Big as hell, man. Uh, definitely my inspiration, always in my basement, uh, my basement gym. And um, another picture of him here. This was at the uh, Memorial Arm Wrestling Tournament we had for him. And then uh, I got my cousin Adam here, another... Um, Another close person to me that's passed away. And I just kind of keep everybody down here. It's kind of like a little bit of motivation. Keeps me going. I get to look at them and, you know, reminisce with them when I'm down here training. It's kind of like they're still here. But, uh, so anyway, back to the arm wrestling. Um, I, uh, after the game of arms show, like I said, I kind of got my ass whipped and it was a little demoralizing because not only did I, you know, did my hometown see it, but millions of viewers seen it, all over the country seen it. And, uh, you know, my reputation was kind of, uh, you know, a little altered back in town. They were like, oh, maybe this dude isn't as bad as he thinks. Well, you know, fighting and arm wrestling are completely different. So let's not even get that mixed up. I can still throw these hands, so don't get it twisted. But, uh, after the game of arm show, I made a choice for myself. I said, listen, <clears throat> what do you want to do? You want to do arm wrestling or, or not? You know, you're either going to do it all in or not. So I took some time and I said, fuck it, I want to do it. So uh, that was 2013 and we are now in uh, 2018. And I am still currently pulling and doing well. I am probably one of the hardest working dudes out there. Um... My spirit's hard to break. Um, like I said, growing up as a youth in wrestling, um, I was not the greatest wrestler. So most of the time, my face was being pounded into the mat over and over and over. So accepting losses and ass whippings is, is nothing that I'm shy of. Um, I know how to handle defeat and handle an ass whooping and keep a smile on my face, come back harder and stronger the next time. So that's what I did, and uh, I nutted it up, I fucking grinded it out, trained my ass off, and uh, now this is where I'm at, all these doors are open, and I'm a um, sponsored athlete with Country Crush, uh, Ray Cody, um, with, and then now with Iron Mag Labs, uh, Christian Duke, um, another great guy from Buffalo, Big Frank, you know, so my, uh, my will drive, my... Um, determination, my hard work, and uh, everything that I've put into this is, has gotten me to this point. So I really don't see any stopping me now. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's a little bit about what's going to be talked about and going down in the fucking lion's den down here. So um, hopefully that's a decent introduction, and um, we'll see what's more for the king of the jungle, baby.